just when I thought I'd gone as far down the gimmicky music gadget rabbit hole as I could, I managed to come across a whole new load of whacked out music gear. Today, we're checking these gizmos out. To kick things off, we have the cute little gum base made by the Japanese company Maiwa Denki. To get it out of its compact state, you fold it out, flick this thing here, and then you wrap this rubber band around it. And what you're left with is meant to kind of act like an upright bass, except for it's one two hundredth of the size. There's a contact mic here, there's a speaker built into it, or an output, and the way you play it is you pluck it, and then slide your finger to change the pitch. Here's my attempt at playing something with this. If you know what song that was, let me know in the comments section and uh, kudos to me because this thing's actually really quite hard to play. I'm getting lo-fi 8-bit vibes from it so what I think I'm going to do here is whip up something, grab the green screen and uh, go on a little gum bass adventure. I'm actually quite surprised at how this sounds. I had really low expectations going in and coming out of the built-in speaker, it is quite flubbery, but out of the output, hey, it's a bass sound. It's a very rubber bandy type of bass sound, but it's a proper bass sound. I'll take a quick second here to let you know that today is the last day of the sale going on over my course platform, SamuraiGuitarTheory.com. Growing up, no one would have ever considered me a gifted musician. To do what I do, I had to take a very systematic approach to learning my instrument, and that system is the system I teach in my courses. In my courses, The Rudiments and Beyond the Basics, we look at music theory, why music works the way it does, taught with the guitarist in mind. The craft of soloing is for the guitar player who feels like they're just kind of playing notes when they take a solo, and they want to learn how to tell music stories. The style of soloing is for the guitarist who feels that their solos are just kind of boring. They want to add some spice, some flavor, some style, the good stuff into their solos. And today is the last day you can get all five of my courses cheaper than I've ever sold them before. Use promo code SPRING23 on the complete Samurai Guitar Theory Experience Bundle and get them while you still can. You can find more information at SamuraiGuitarTheory.com. I've also put up links in the description. Anyways, let's get back to those gadgets. Next up we have the I'm just gonna call it the Tesla coil amp because the name that it comes up as on Amazon is an absolute mouthful. Now, if you remember, I used this in another video and I didn't have the greatest time with it. It's a bit of a puzzle because it doesn't come with any instructions, but I figured out it makes a loud noise, shoots out some sparks, and you can control the frequency and pitch of that signal using the knobs. Now, it comes advertised as a musical toy, and I was trying to figure out what is the musical application of that. I mean, I guess I can make some percussion sounding stuff by sticking my hands in it and playing around with it a bit, but really, what's the point here? But after digging around some similar products, I found found out that it picks up Bluetooth. And it would have been nice if it mentioned that anywhere or if there was the, I don't know, the universal sign for Bluetooth <laughs> somewhere on it. But either way, I sent a song into it and it was kind of cool, but it sounded pretty bad. For example, here's a song that always gets copyright claimed on YouTube. And I suspect there'll be no issue here. And that's where we left off with this thing. But I realized what if we simplified matters here? What if I just sent some single notes through this? What if I put my guitar through it? And this is where the fun began. Check this out. Now that's a pretty nasty fuzz tone and an insanely cool visual effect. However, you have no control over the tone and the volume is obnoxiously loud. I also had to jump through a number of technological hoops to get my guitar to connect with this thing. In a practical setting, it makes no sense to get this over a fuzz pedal, 
but it is pretty cool. Moving on, we have a Shruti box. And to refer to these as a gimmicky musical gadget is perhaps a little bit culturally insensitive. They are often used by East Indian musicians as a practice tool, and they do have a storied past. However, YouTube titles do have a character limit, and gimmicky musical gadgets, as well as a East Indian musical practice tool with a storied past, unfortunately exceeds that limit. So peace and love, no disrespect meant. I just really wanted to show you guys this and I don't have another video that it makes sense in. Here's what we've got. It's a fairly simple contraption that works kind of like an accordion. Air is pushed through it by a bellow that's controlled by a foot pedal and the tone or tones that come out are determined by which of these little windows that you open. And with this, you can have a note or chord ringing out indefinitely. And droning tones like this are commonly heard in East Indian music. So while you could use it as an instrument, it's commonly used as something that you practice along to. For my demo, I'm gonna pair the Shruti box with my sitar guitar, a reverse delay pedal, and maybe some cool lighting. And I think that should get me where I wanna go with this. <laughs> love it. It was an Etsy purchase and when you buy things on an online craft sale, you never know what you're going to get, but it's well built, it's incredibly easy to use, and it actually does have some practical usage. I mean, having a chord or note ringing out as you practice your solos is great, and sure, you can mimic that digitally, but it's different when the sound is actually physically moving through the air like this. It came from India, so it has that authentic charm, and they do let you customize what it says on it, which is always a nice touch. Next up, we have the flatter, which turns a normal fretted guitar into a fretless guitar. Years ago, a buddy and I converted his Squire Strat into a fretless, and it was a fairly involved process. We had to heat up the frets with a soldering iron so the glue would melt and we could yank them out, and then we filled in those gaps with wood filler. With this, you simply loosen the strings, slide it into place, it back up and hey oh those pesky frets are no longer part of the equation so if you take something that would have sounded like this by adding the flatter it now sounds like this It's a unique sound, and there are things that you can do on a fretless that you can't emulate any other way. There's also certainly a learning curve with it, which I wouldn't say I'm necessarily over, but uh, here's a longer demo. fretless guitar and hey I'd say this gets you 75-80% of the way there. Having your fingers slide in the plastic definitely isn't as nice as the touch of a real fretless wood neck and it is somewhat limiting having it cut off at the 13th fret but yeah, it's pretty good. If you want to start messing around in the fretless realm, you either need to buy a specific guitar or permanently modify one of your guitars. This is a fairly major investment, especially since most people just kind of want to experiment. For around $50, this provides more than enough for most people. I don't think there's any other product that does this, and I'm genuinely quite impressed. Moving on, we have the Playtronica Playtron, which may look like a big old rat's nest of cables, but it provides you with the ability to turn anything into a musical instrument. For example, have you ever wanted your sausages to be a drum kit? Or how about a carrot and pickle keyboard? Here's what we got going on here. This thing is connected to your computer. You attach a cable to it. And then attach this to, well, in this situation, I'm gonna use an apple. And the Playtron can now detect whether or not I am touching my apple. The Playtron itself, or the apple for that matter, doesn't generate any sound, but rather it takes the information and sends it to a computer or a sound generating device in the form of the musical digital language called MIDI. And with that, you can turn your entire charcuterie board into an orchestra of sorts. It 
It does exactly what it's meant to do. Is there any practical application outside of the gimmick? I'm not sure there is, but it is a pretty great gimmick. And last for today is the fart pedal, which you guessed it, takes your guitar sound and turns it into a fart sound. I've got the Mono Neon Signature Edition, which besides the funky paint job, it came sealed in a tin of tub o tasty beans. Now I found this quite hilarious, even though I knew exactly what I was gonna do, but I think it would be funnier to spring this on someone who's not expecting anything. I'm gonna go get Samurai Jenny and tell her that I want her opinion on a guitar gadget, but I'm gonna give her no clue what that gadget does. Play a note. <laughs> what? Keep playing for a bit. <laughs> Oh, it sounds wet. And then there's dry <laughs> mode. So that's the fart pedal. Here's my official review. The tracking isn't great. There's a delay between when you hit the note and when the pedal triggers, which unfortunately renders it fairly useless in any practical musical situation. I also wish that the farts change pitch with the notes on your guitar, but hey, maybe that's something that we could work on if they ever want to do a Sammy G signature. With that said, hey, it's a good pedal. It's well built, nice tone, true bypass. It won't be for everyone, but it's a reasonable price point for a boutique pedal. And if you're looking for this kind of thing, I'd recommend checking this out. Ladies and gentlemen, there you have it, another round of gimmicky musical gadgets. If you wanna check any of this stuff out, I've got some links in the description. And remember, today is the very last day you can get all my courses cheaper than I've ever sold them before. Use promo code SPRING23 on the complete Samurai Guitar Theory Experience bundle. And uh, yeah, get it while the getting's good because it's about to go away. You can find more at SamuraiGuitarTheory.com. I've also got links in the description. Thank you all for watching. If you want to check out some of that Sammy G merch, you can find that at shopsamuraiguitarist.com. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button, ring that bell, and stay tuned for a wide range of music-related content. Until next time, look after yourselves, look after each other, look after the planet. I'm Samurai Guitarist, and I'll see you again soon.